shot of these junkies shooting up drugs in an alley. In fact, the one wish I Wait, have in my life yes, is a the shot longer. of the junkies shooting up drugs in an alley to be longer. Oh, man, over already. Hey guys, my name's Dan, and today's reaction comes from Dead Meat. This is Friday the 13th, Part 8. Jason takes Manhattan Kill Count Recount, and oh boy, this this certainly was a movie, and then this certainly was Friday the 13th, I think. I will uh, let James get into it, and I'll give my opinion here or there, uh, but I'll say my overall opinion to the very end of this video. But before we get into it, if you haven't already, please go over and support that video. I'll leave a link to the channel, long link to the original video in the description. And I want to thank guys for trying to check out this reaction. Really do appreciate it. And if you are brand new, welcome. I put out reactions every single day, stuff that's funny, scary, trailers, and just about everything in between. So if that's your sort of thing, it'd mean a world to me if you hit that subscribe button. Because not only by doing so will you help to support me, but you also get access to future and past admin reactions that I've already done. And it's super easy to do. First, go right below this video, get that like button, some love, and hit that subscribe button right there. And without any further ado, let you. Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm I love James, that. And today we're looking at Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. That's how you know we're in for a hell of a show for this one. Released in the year of my birth, 1989. Desperate for a box office hit they hadn't seen since the final chapter, Paramount hired Rob Hedden to write and direct the 8th Friday installment. Hedden had never made a feature film before, but had written and directed several episodes of the Friday the 13th TV series which got him noticed by producers Barbara Sachs and Frank Mancuso Jr. Hedden wanted to take Jason out of Crystal Lake, thank God, and franchise godfather Frank Mancuso said, hey, why not put him in New York? An excited Hedden then wrote a script featuring the Brooklyn Bridge, Broadway, and Jason diving off the Statue of Liberty. Unfortunately, none of that would make it into the film. He certainly had ambitions that we didn't have the budget to allow for. Despite a budget that ballooned to $5 million, more than any Friday film before it, there simply wasn't enough money to shoot everything in New York. The script gradually changed until Jason was mostly on a cruise ship, and when he finally gets to New York, it's barely recognizable, since most of the city scenes were shot in Vancouver, British Columbia. Outside of a single shot, which is admittedly iconic and badass, the movie mm -hmm. feels more like Jason Takes Generic City, USA. While I appreciate the return of hotter and the fact that this is something different, Jason Takes Manhattan is inexplicably, mind-numbingly boring. So many slow shots of Jason reaching towards and picking up items, and scenes that are straight up slogs because of by-the-numbers dialogue. It's 15 minutes longer than it needs to be, and mm -hmm. we don't even get kick-ass kills during that time. This was peak MPAA pressure, so the movie's gore was cut to prudish levels. Somehow, yeah. this was my favorite Friday the 13th when I was a kid, and I want to like it as an adult, but I can't. I just nope. can't. No. It's a big, bad movie that yep. bores me to F and tears. Yes. Still, a bow and a city should have plenty of potential victims. Let's sure. see how many Jason gets his hands on and get to the kills. The movie begins with narration establishing a dark urban tone. We live in claustrophobia, a land of steel and concrete, trapped by dark waters. Oh shit, and Batman's in Times Square? Get oh yeah. Way, title card, I was looking at Burton Batman. I'll say it, I love this opening montage. The sleazy narration, the grimy city, and best of all, an incredible song called The Darkest Side of the Night. It kind of reminded me a bit of uh, the first TMT movie. My guy casually getting robbed. I sing this song to myself to this very day, and I'm not even a little bit ashamed of that. It was written by the film's composer, Fred Mollen, who at this point had taken over completely for Harry Manfredini. Mollen wrote the song, which was performed by Metropolis, to sound like something from Robert Plant's album, Now and Zen. It's fucking cool. Almost as cool as these junkies we get to watch shooting up drugs in an alley. You know, I'm sad that we don't get nearly a long enough look at these junkies shooting up drugs in an alley. It's just way too short for my liking. This shot of these junkies shooting up drugs in an alley. In fact, the one wish I Wait, have in my life yes, is for the shot longer. of the junkie shooting up drugs in an alley to be longer. Oh, man, over already? What a bummer. We're back at Crystal Lake where a floating fuck pad Good is one, James. fully used. Jim Miller gets his girlfriend Susie Donnelly topless in a jiffy and spends a good 30 seconds halfway taking off her underwear. Damn, this series still horny. Horny for Jason, that is. There was this boy named Jason Voorhees. 
Yes, it's the legend of Jason again. Er, wait, that's Jason? Yep, that's Jason. Apparently. Jim recites the whole story, Mama Voorhees beheading and all, before his boat's anchor jiggles a power line perfectly to put it on the Frankenstein setting. And sure, let's have Jason near a summer camp again. Sure, why not? Build Camp Crystal Lake over the remains of that house that blew up? Or does this movie ignore the new blood and take place after Jason lives? Both of those ended with Jason chained to the bottom of the lake, so mm -hmm. who's to say, really? Fuck yeah. it, nothing matters anymore. With nope. his nasty gloves, Jason Bohr ready to claim his first victim. Er, wait, that's nope. Jason? No, nope. that is not Jason. It's Jim, with an exact replica of Jason's mask, axe mark and all. The real Jason, at his muddiest and mossiest you'll ever see, steps forward and stabs Jim in the stomach with a spear gun. This kill always confused me as a kid. Those look like guts hanging off the spear gun when Jason holds it up. But mm -hmm. no, those tubes are part of the gun, as you can see when it goes into Jim's stomach. Jason oh, yeah. reclaims his spear and steps out onto the deck, where it doesn't take long for him to find Susie hiding. Almost seems like Jason wants her to run away or something. Girl, why are you just thrashing around? Dude's giving you an out. Yes, she go. doesn't take it, and Jason stabs her in the stomach. That yep. was a slow trajectory, Suze, and you didn't move out of the way. I no. I guess you just didn't have the will to survive. And to that, Jason says, uh -huh. game over. Susie's actor, Tiffany Paulson, went on to write several screenplays and seems delightful in all the interviews I've seen of her. Very complimentary of the fake torso used for her kill. She okay. has bigger boobs than I do. <laughs> she has nipples, I remember that. Now, we've seen Crystal Lake a lot throughout the years, and while its appearance sometimes changes drastically, Never have I ever seen it attached to a river or a canal. Yet somehow, Jim's boat finds its way to a cruise ship docked at sea, ready for a trip through the Atlantic to New York City. Even though, look at those mountains back there. This is obviously the Pacific Northwest. With a single splashy shot, this ship has got a stowaway. The SS Lazarus is headed to New York as a graduation gift for the senior class of Lakeview High. And what a ship! These kids get mm -hmm. to shake their booties, shuffle their boards, and shoot ah skeet skeet a goddamn! Now, oh, the skeet, skeet. film needs a final girl, and she needs a bland boyfriend guy. So thank goodness Rennie and Sean are here to perfunctorily check those boxes. Uh -huh. Rennie, who's got a good boy named Toby, no. has a troubled past that's left her scared of water. That's why her guardian and uncle, Charles McCullough, who's also a teacher and chaperone of this trip, didn't want her to come along. And dude maybe has a point. This chick be seeing oddly normal looking swampy boys swimming outside her porthole. Mm -hmm. Sean, meanwhile, is dealing with his own stuff. His dad's an admiral, and he's been failing all his nautical pop quizzes lately. Womp womp. Sean's played by Scott Reeves, who replaced Lee Coleman two weeks into shooting, much to the chagrin of Rennie's actor Jensen Daggett. That's all I remember about him. He was really hot. And oh. Producers told director Rob Hedden to replace Coleman after they saw his acting. This is Jason's fault! Not another word on Jason, you hear me? No, I don't! And you put time you listen to me if you want to get off the ship alive! Let's get to the lifeboat! They also said something about him not having chemistry with Daggett, but she doesn't agree with that. Oh. I thought there was chemistry. Whatever. Doesn't matter who's playing them. I'm already bored with these characters. Let's mm -hmm. find someone to kill. Oh, really? This rocker chick JJ, played yeah. by Saffron Henderson? She's Can awesome. get rid of her right away? Man, fuck this movie. Seriously. JJ's shredding in the boiler room, where the acoustics are straight bitching, when Jason mm -hmm. shows up to Pick give her up. a short, pretty teleporty chase. He kills her by slamming a flak Tansonian flying bee Oof. into her face. With JJ JJ's sadly gone, we've got to hang out with the other student, like her friend Wayne, who's portrayed as an ugly geek in a very dated depiction. This dude mm -hmm. walked so Harry Styles could run on a watermelon sugar high. There's also True. a cocky boxer named Julius, and popular girls Tamara and Eva, who are about to take after a Friday film director. They're exactly the stereotypes oh. you'd expect from this movie. If we get caught, I could lose my science scholarship and everything. Talking to the prom queen, Eva. Before Jason kills any actual characters, though, he's got to pad his stats with the boxer guy who Julius beat in a bout. Originally, he was found with a couple of darts in his eyes, but when the Ooh. MPAA said that that was too graphic, they went back and reshot sure. his kill in a sauna. In fact, I don't think it's Kane Hodder playing Jason here, since he was busy with other work by the time they filmed it. The new kill has Jason sticking a sauna rock into the guy's abdomen, Oof. but like, why'd that turn into a tummy fire? And what I the don't fuck? Know. Why's the hole up there now? He's I don't know! Stuck. True to her mean girl nature, Tamara shoulders Rennie off the boat as a prank. And it's a good thing that ship is, uh, anchored, I guess. Because otherwise, Swampy Boy Jason might have pulled her down into the depths. And I don't see no green smoke around, meaning there ain't a merm in sight. Sean jumps mm -hmm. in and saves Rennie, and she's taken care of by Colleen Van Dusen, another teacher who we've seen is super supportive of Rennie. Oh, that's mm -hmm. nice. Uncle yep. Charles freaks out over the accident, and again, he's right to be concerned. Rennie's seeing blood coming out of her sink, and freaking arms coming out of 
of her mirror. Oh, my oh no! God, it's Jason again. Only with more makeup this time. I don't <laughs> Whatever, know. Whatever. That kid's having a friggin' blast. At least that makes one of us. This movie's so stupid it hurts. Rob uh -huh. Hammond added these fantastical visuals to compete with the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Little boy Jason was played by Tim Merkovich, son of the film's editor Steve Merkovich. I was the coolest kid in fourth grade for for a couple of months. Tim took over after the first kid hired couldn't handle the underwater stuff, which was filmed in water tanks at a nearby university in British Columbia. Sounds like his dad had a bigger issue with those scenes than he did. It was troubling to cut something like this because I'm watching my son look like he's drowning. Yeah, through. right? Like his father, Tim would go on to be an editor. He recently edited three Crypt TV series, oh. Stereoscope, Kinderfonger, and Mira Mira. Cool. Nice. In a continuation of this movie's senseless, shitty script, Charles is hounding Tamara for a biology project, which should have been collected long before they ever got on a goddamn boat. She turns it into something sexy, evoking a hilarious reaction from Charles. Hey. He doesn't do anything when she hey. first comes on to him, and by the time he remembers he's her teacher, it's too late. Wayne like, has captured him on candid camera. This whole blackmailing subplot goes absolutely nowhere, no. so let's just move on to some kill. Yeah, let's I'm forget Jay about Man. it. Perfect! I was just talking about you, brah. He punches his way into the bathroom and strips the stunt performer's robe off before breaking the mirror into shards and coming after Tamara with them. It's a bit disturbing how terrified she looks and how frantically she begs for her life, but it doesn't stop Jason from stabbing stabbing her to death off screen. Tomorrow's actor Charlene Martin was excited to do her death scene, but was at first uncomfortable with doing on-screen nudity. To put Fair. her at ease, Rob Hedden stripped himself, not knowing that his crew would roll camera while he did. <laughs> Anyways, the gambit worked. It actually made it really fun, and it gave me a chance. I, I sort of lost all my inhibitions and went for it. The ship heads into okay. a storm before Jason claims his next victim, the Admiral's chief engineer, Jim Carlson. He's played by Fred Henderson, who 14 years later would play the dentist of that ambiguously aged boy in Final Destination 2. Jason kills Ooh. him in an interesting shot that where he's lit in green and obfuscated by rain as the camera stays outside. Ouchies. I'm annoyed at how Jim's backbending doesn't match up with Jason's stats. It's like nope. every kill in this thing is amateur hour. Another good example, when Admiral Robert Robertson gets got. We switch to choppy slow-mo as his neck is slit with the wrong side of a machete. Oh All the while, God. you're probably thinking, oh, what? My throat? No. The oh kills my in God. Jason Hicks Manhattan were cut down by the MPAA, but they didn't have to be as much as they were in the new blood. By this point, the filmmakers knew they'd get harsh treatment from the ratings board, so Hedden didn't even bother shooting gory versions to begin with. Sean and Rennie discover that his dad is dead, but with Jason playing technician, he can't get a hold of the Coast Guard. Quick, gather everyone else onto the bridge, Sean. The students? Uncle Charles? Maybe some kind of super sus semen. You're all gonna die. Oh, perfect. This yeah. dude's been a harbinger of dooming it up all movie. He's come back. And you're all gonna die. There's no real reason for this movie to have a wily deckhand other than no. to have a nautical crazy Ralph. This voyage is doomed. While Uncle Charles don't want to hear about no Jason Voorhees, Julius wants to find that zombie man-child and get loco. I say... We regroup and let's go find this motherfucker before he finds us, huh? Julius is cool. Eva goes to check on Tamara. How's she doing, Eva? Pretty dead. Yeah, yep. probably because of that guy. She runs yep. away and finds herself in a hellscape of shitty decorations. And don't say she's all confused because of cocaine, kids. We never actually saw her do it. No. And that was hours ago anyway. Cocaine wouldn't be causing these kinds of effects this no. many hours later. Learn no. about drugs, okay? Jason busts in, and because all the doors are locked for no fucking reason, he's able to teleport from shot to shot to shot to shot until he's playing around. He kills Eva by strangling her for what feels like an eternity. When she finally dies, he drops her to the ground with a nasty thud. Gotta see that drop again because Oof. Kelly Who was an absolute champ during it. Uh -huh. This was the first film role for the then 20-year-old Kelly Who. She'd later be in X2 and The oh. Scorpion King and do all sorts of voice acting, including Devorah in Mortal Kombat. That's Please awesome! will eat you alive. She also plays poker? Fuck yeah, Kelly Who. Since a full-fledged man-child like that. her way, Wayne takes a gun into the steamy bowels of the ship. He loses his glasses and decides to shoot blurs and ask questions later. Okay, question time, Wayne. How about, are you Jason? Answer, no. You killed a random crewmate, Wayne. Gonna mention that in your interview to be Sheriff of Riverdale? Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, I never noticed until now that this crewmate was actually seen earlier when Tamara and Eva flirted with him. Huh, and now all three of them are dead. Funny how things work out sometimes. Yeah. Jason doesn't like anyone impinging on his murder stats, so he chases Wayne down and gives him the Voorhees special. By which I mean tossing him into a bunch of electrical shit. It kills him and also turns him into a dummy. And boy, does 
That dummy burned. Jason then sure does. Outside to kill a guy named Miles, who looks like a Paul brother and who had more character in earlier versions of the film. Something about being a diver. By the way, congratulations on winning that intramural diving championship, Miles. Maybe that's why his instincts are to climb a ladder to escape Jason and or raise the alliance flag. Too bad for him, J-Man doesn't want an alliance and can clearly teleport. Come on! Tell me how else he got up there so fast. I, he kills Miles by throwing him down. Especially considering everything he does, he does really slowly. Out onto a weather vane, which impales him through the side. Oof. Ouchie! Oh shit, Julius, did you see that? Well, Jason hates witnesses, so into the water you go. It's not a bad idea to get off this ship right now. We've got that deckhand running around with a knife, Uncle Charles straight hunting him, water starting to fill the lower decks, and oh yeah, the place is haunted with stupid looking swampy boy spirits <laughs> what the fuck is he even doing there, i DJ? don't like, know like, 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 real jason tries to grab at <laughs> rennie through a porthole but she stabs him in the <laughs> eye with a stephen king pad he's hurt but not enough to give up so you know what i'll give jason these four students as kills after colleen leaves them behind to gather up others we see jason looking at him through a window ready to kill and they're never seen again after this nope. there's also a line of dialogue suggesting they died i left the others in the restaurant there is no more restaurant. There is no Saeed! And now to deal with the other students. When the Lazarus left the dock, we saw a whole bunch of kids partying and having a good time. But the thing with shitty low-budget movies like this is that they don't usually track the extras they use or care about that consistency. No. These are just bodies filling a frame. There's no definitive way to count how many people were on the ship, but to avoid any complaining, I will put 18 kills on the count right now. I took the shot with the most individuals I could see at once, 22 when the ship was departing, and subtracted the four randos I counted in the restaurant. As best I can tell, these 22 people don't include main characters who have already been counted. And I can't Fair. add randos from subsequent shots because they may have been among those 22. Got it? Great. Before okay. they abandon ship entirely, there is one more definitive kill I can count. The deckhand who stumbles out with an axe in his back, proving to Charles that he wasn't the killer. Or was he? No, he wasn't. Duh, duh, duh. The rest of the survivors get onto a lifeboat where they're joined by Julius popping out of the water and a very wet good boy. Oh, no, don't go boy. They leave Jason behind, axing them where they're going. They row through the foggy night and emptiness until finally they emerge into New York City, baby! Just look at that sexy lady of liberty! Mm -hmm. They dock at the world-famous New York City docks, renowned for their emptiness and lack of activity. Somehow, Jason follows them there. It defies believability, but it does give us Kane Hodder's quizzical reaction to a hockey billboard. Kind of funny, especially his look into the camera that basically asks, you believe this shit? As fun as that <laughs> yeah, breaking the fourth is, wall it's there. not nearly as fun as, yes! Finally, the junkies! I'm so glad they're back. Yay, Everyone junkies! I mean, they shoot at dogs, and oh. abduct women at gunpoint, and oh. holy fucking shit, forcibly inject them with drugs. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, you know, I know they seemed cool in that 10 minute shot of them shooting up, but I'm starting to think these junkies are bad guys. For all its really? boots and butts, the Friday franchise doesn't usually delve into sexual assault, which is why Jason steps in to stop these dudes and preserve the integrity of his series. He kills the first one by stabbing him through the back with a syringe. Par for the course, the kill looks pretty shitty. The Ooh. second guy shows up and shoots at Jason, but bullets have never stopped the big man before. He kills this junkie before he can ever become a warlord and shows that in this case, shooting up is safer than hitting the pipe. Rennie runs oh. away, so Jason goes and finds Julius, who we follow follows onto a rooftop. In the movie's best sequence, a trapped Julius turns and fights this was, this was fun. about originally written to take place in Madison Square Garden. It goes on for over a minute straight, looking like practice mode in Smash Bros. Mm -hmm. Julius punches Jason dozens of times in the face and chest, and though a trained boxer was used for the long takes, actor B.C. Dupree did the punching in the closer shots. A oh, pal nice. Kane Hodder told him to go all out so it would look good. Dupree did, and it does. He ended up bloodying his knuckles on Hodder's hockey mask. This is probably the best any character has ever fared against Jason Voorhees. Fair and point. Yet, it's still not enough. Jason's Homer Simpson boxing technique successfully tires Julius out, causing him to all but surrender. Take your best shot. Motherfucker. Jason does, and a single oh. punch knocks Julius' oh. off. The head spins through the air and bounces down into a dumpster, scoring Jason at least three points. Yes. The others reunite and find a cop who's delightfully Irish. I find it a tall tale indeed, but you seem like honest folks, so I'm inclined to believe at least some of what you say. In his car, they find Julius' nasty head, a prop Oof. BC Dupree got to keep. He's oh, that's cool. cool. While calling dispatch, the cop is seized and dispatched of off-screen by Jason in an alleyway. Then guess what? Now Jason's over there. Teleportation! 
station. Yay. Freddy drives the cop car up to and over him, proving that he's real and not a hallucination. This little wet alien kid, though? Total hallucination. And watch how this shit is edited. <laughs> You know what, y'all? I'm starting to think this movie isn't very good. No, Here's it's not. <laughs> Deucin is left in the cop car when it ups and explodes into a giant fireball. Why didn't we see or hear her in the car before it blew up? Holy shit, this movie is so fucking bad. Sure, Renny, let's get your stupid little backstory thing resolved. Just stare into the flaming puddle until it turns into a flaming lake. We see in a flashback how Renny developed her fear of the water. Her dick uncle tossed her into Crystal Lake before she could swim. Instead of helping her, he let her sink below the surface where she saw Swamp Boy Jason in like his third different makeup design for the film. God, literally none of them are good, but just no. take a fucking look and go with it! Renny and Sean ditch Uncle Charles and push him into a pile of shredded office paper or something. Jason appears and <laughs> Uncle Charles runs away from I love the fact that he can barely get that out without keeping a straight face. And clearly looking at him over his shoulder when he goes into this building. And yet, wouldn't you know it, he's immediately tossed out of the second story window. That's called telling Teleportation, y'all! In what must have been a career low point for veteran character actor the late Peter Mark Richmond, Jason takes Charles over to a barrel filled with sledge and a dead rat and kills Ugh. the bastard uncle by drowning him in it. It takes a good long while and features Jason in full rage mode, but you know what? It's fine. Unlike in the crossroads, no one will miss this Uncle Charles, y'all. Cool. Nope. Now we're down to just Rennie and Sean, so at least the movie's over. So Wait, there's 20 minutes left? What the fuck? Oh, come on, you come two. On. Less kissing and more Come on! Please. There's a hockey mask killer after you. Get a fucking move on! I said it before and I'll say it again all day. This movie is slow and boring. I was more entertained watching the various outtakes, which include Kane Hodder playing a practical prank with a strap on and some oh, hilarious ad-libbing by Peter Mark Richmond. Well, I thought that it would be easier for the Coast Guard to find us if we weren't moving. And cut it. Jesus, you dumbass. <laughs> the movie's deleted scenes show that it was originally even more bloated. Probably a symptom of this being Rob Hedden's first feature-length film. That's but fair. But I also gotta say, Hedden seems like an all-around decent guy. He kept his set free of drugs and fostered a warm, familial atmosphere, listened to Kane Hodder's suggestions for the Jason character, and refused to break overtime laws to keep his cast and crew safe. Hate this movie all you want. I certainly do. But yep. no reason to hate the man who made it. True. I just feel incredibly honored that I got to be a part of it. Nobody will ever be able to take that away from me and I'm just, I can't believe that I got to do it. Thrilled that I got to be involved. Jason smashes his way after Good Ray and Sean through all the locations we saw in the opening montage. They eventually end up on the subway where Jason is ignored by the other passengers. It's part of the running joke where he's not that out of place in New York City. Oh man, I'm not a fan of the shot where the train brakes make Jason fall down. It almost looks like an actor making a mistake. It's so out of character for him. Mm -hmm. They temporarily stop Jason by frying him with the third rail and emerge above ground in midtown Manhattan where a 40 foot crane shot takes in all the scenery. By time production began, they only had the budget for two shooting days in New York. Obviously not enough to salvage this piece of shit, but I'm glad they got this money shot of Jason in Times Same. Square. It was shot on a Friday night with crowds of fans watching from behind barricades. Since the other films were all shot in isolated rural areas, this was the first time people saw Jason filming in public. It made Kane Hodder feel like a rock star. I just turned and looked at him. It went nuts. It was the most incredible thing I've ever seen, screaming and cheering just because I had given them a look. In the That's closet. awesome. He says it was the best experience he ever had as Jason, though I'm sure a close second would have been when he promoted this movie on the Arsenio Hall show. He appeared in full costume as Hall quote unquote interviewed him, which of course was met with hilarious silence. You know what I've noticed? I see all your movies, man. And you know what I've really noticed? <laughs> You're angry. <laughs> Did you get cut from the hockey team in high school? Oh no. Jason oh no. This is off a group of 80s punks, which gets them so excited they break the fourth wall and speak to their favorite YouTube host. You are dead meat! I am. Thanks for being here. Yes, you are! Guys. Jason scares them away by showing his face in a joke Kane Hodder later said he didn't like. It's whatever to me, but I do like the corny line that we get from this waitress. You don't understand. There is a maniac trying to kill us. 
Welcome to New York. Jason busts in through the diner wall and maybe kills the waiter when he throws him into a mirror that shatters on impact. Uh, I know this doesn't seem that deadly, especially since the waiter's played by future Jason Voorhees, Ken Kersinger, but it's traditionally counted as a kill, so whatever. Let's have fun and include it. Okay? Sure. Honey and Sean flee into the sewer tunnels, apparently forgetting how New York's sewer system works. Toxic waste, son. The sewer floods out with the stuff every night at midnight. Yeah, everyone knows the sewer sure. floods with toxic waste every night. That totally happens in a real fucking sewer system. That makes total fucking sense, totally. right? Actually, no, it doesn't. It's stupid, and so is this guy for saying it. Let's go ahead and murder him by hitting his shadow <laughs> with a red off screen. Jason him. stalks towards <laughs> Remy, but since the sewer's got barrels of toxic waste sitting around like this was some Sega Genesis game, she splashes him in the face with it. That forces mm -hmm. him to take off his mask and turns him into a melty, stupid-looking <laughs> shit face. Oh. Holy fuck, I can't believe how fucking awful this looks. Oh my Man, god. This movie really takes away Jason's menace. Since the clock is striking midnight, that toxic waste flood is a-coming. And that, in turn, for some reason, causes this to happen. Mommy? Yep, Jason's talking and puking out water like a shit-sculpted fountain. I can't believe they filmed this garbage and tried to call it a motion picture. And that a studio as big as Paramount put its name on this uh -huh. thing. Holy shit. And get this, the original ending was somehow even stupider. Oh. A little boy Jason coming out of Melty Muffin. What? Mouth. What, what the, the hell is that? You know, Jason's a regular looking kid in his underwear. Just sure. Just sewer floor looking all fucking wet and dumb. Why and not? Floats away signaling that this movie can finally fucking act. Just as soon as we make sure the good boys Yay. are. Yay. Great. Fucking roll credits, please. Get out of here. died in this piece of shit that manages to piss me off every single time I watch it? <laughs> Let's fucking find out and get to the fucking numbers. Tell us how you really feel, James. What the fuck? Oh, no. Oh. Fuck. Oh, my God. No, James. James. No. James. James. No. James. Don't, don't drown. Come on. Get back up. Get back up. Get back up. Oh, that was close. Being generous this time through, I counted 42 kills in Jason Takes Manhattan. 17 victims were male, 7 were female, and 18 were extras who were too far away for me to bother with. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. stupid fucking runtime of 100 <laughs> minutes, and that left us with a kill on average of 2.38 minutes. I'll give a golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Julius because it's yep. part of the only scene in this trash movie that I like. Once again, Badass. my favorite kill of the movie matches with Kane Hodder. Maybe because it was cathartic after filming that scene. I took a little abuse myself, so by the time it was time to knock the head off the dummy, I was ready to do it. Dolph sure. Ready for Lamus mm. kill could be oh so many of them. I guess the Irish cop. That one had the least to offer. And that's it. Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, came out in 1989 and became the lowest grossing film of the franchise to date. I wonder why. Since no. Frank Mancuso is now busy with more mainstream stuff like internal affairs, he was officially done with the series. Paramount would sell the Jason rights to New Line Cinema, the house that Freddy built, and their first attempt at a Jason flick would be Jason Goes to Hell. I'll look at that next week, but until okay. then, I'm James A. Janice, and this has been The Kill Count. On the next Kill Count. Most of the Friday the 13th franchise has seen Jason Voorhees killing horny teens around Crystal Lake. Running on smoking a little dope, having a little premarital sex, and getting water. For years, people said to give them something different, but they couldn't have meant like this. No, not like oh. this. Oh. Oh. Jason Goes to Hell is the first Jason movie released by New Line Cinema. And those Freddy loving bastards kill the guy in the first 10 minutes. Shit. But fear not, Jason's soul slug, or whatever the fuck that is, can possess people. So it hops around inhabiting blue collar nobodies on a quest to find his never before mentioned sister. Sound stupid? Many say yes. But at least Creighton Duke is here. That guy knows how to wear a cowboy hat. Sure does. I think you really know who I am. This week, watch a Jason a movie that only right features there. 13 minutes of our main murder man as it unabashedly steals plot points from Freddy's Dead. The true Jason voice. Something you and I have never seen before. Halloween 2? Jason had a sister. And Evil Dead for some reason. Christ. Then on Friday, tune in for the Kill Count recount only on Dead Meat. It's gonna be a real joy to count. Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday, can currently be watched on the pictured streaming platform. Yeah, I, I don't know if stealing from the Evil Dead, certainly in this case, it was a good idea. Granted, the Evil Dead was, uh, it was something back in the day, but I don't think this is the movie that really should be borrowed from. So, yeah, this was pretty terrible, uh, and I was thoroughly bored throughout watching it. 
Uh, I was really struggling just to like pay attention to it because I don't think I ever saw this movie before watching it this time. So I had like a little thing of notes on the one side, and I was just trying to uh, just, just just watch it, and then it was just no. There, there was nothing really keeping my attention. So I kind of found myself like sort of drifting off. And it's like, oh, wait, wait, there's still a movie here. Go, oh, there's another kill. It's like, okay, there, there's another kill. And yeah, I, what, I, what I did like though was because the beginning shot, you saw like all these like these different areas that were just basically, they were just showing you where exactly they were going to go, right? They're going to go into the alleyway. They're going to go into the diner. You know, the, that, that part I liked. And then the shot of him looking at himself, that was pretty funny. That was pretty cool. And the little boxing fight uh, at the end with him versus Jason, that that was definitely the best scene, my favorite scene to watch, because he was just really, you know, like he said, just laying into him. And you could you could tell, too. And he thoroughly looked tired afterwards, and I guess he was certainly tired of this movie, like basically everybody else, because, oh, man, I, I, I feel like if I say any more, I'm going to repeat more of what James said, but... Basically, this movie wasn't, it just, it just wasn't good. I'll, I'll, I'll just leave it at that before I rant any more on it. So that'll do it for me here. But before I go, I would like to give a huge shout out to all my $5 and up supporters on Patreon. Marvin Espinoza, Cruising, Wolverine 310, Kester Crotage, Amber K, Mini Melt, Lauren Davenport, and Rocco Lucisano. Thank you guys so very much. You guys are awesome. And I would also like to thank my lone channel member, TMA. Thank you so much, dude. You're awesome as well. And if you too like to have your name read at the end of each and every one of my videos, plus many other fun goodies, maybe even reacting to a past kill count, please head on over to patreon.com slash ddamreactor. Link will be right there in the description. Or you can become a channel member by clicking that join button right there on my channel page or going right below this video and clicking the join button there. And with that being said, comment down below. Let me know what was your least favorite Friday the 13th movie. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Also, if you want to see past reaction and I've done to other dead meat videos, can I just play this right over there, full of them for you. Share this video, subscribe if you have subscribed already. Read notification bell because I put new videos every single day. And I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>